Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about GLFW. What exactly is GLFW? Well, it is one of those underlying tool sets, one of the unsung tools of game development that we don't talk about much but we always depend on. And GLFW is the somewhat contrived acronym Graphics Library Framework. Framework. So that's where the FW comes from, Frame work. Let's pretend it's two words. Anyways, GLFW has been around for quite a while and it solves a very specific problem. If you've ever worked with something like uh, OpenGL or um, uh, Vulkan, you probably have experienced the fact that these do not provide anything for window management or input. It's just not something that these libraries do. And there's been a number of libraries that fill in these places. We'll actually look at a couple of the examples later on, but that's exactly what GLFW actually does. It sets up and creates windows and gives you nice utilities for working with something like um, OpenGL. So if you want to create a game engine or a graphics library using OpenGL, you're going to need some kind of a tool for creating your window locally. Now, if you want to do it on a per platform basis, you can use the native APIs. The problem is that code isn't very portable. So what this allows you to do is the exact same thing, but in a very cross-platform manner. Now, GLFW, we're also talking about today because version 3.3 was just released. Now, this, as you can see from their news archive, isn't a very common occurrence. In fact, the last version, 3.2.1, was released in 2016. So I did not expect to see this release at all, frankly. So what exactly is in this release? Well, there's not a whole lot new, but we're going to go into a bit of an overview of what GLFW actually provides, not specifically what's new here. One of the nice things they did, though, is they standardized on the database provided by SDL. Now, SDL, or Simple Direct Media Library, um, it, it uses a standardized input controller database. So they've been creating this giant database of game controllers, while GLFW, instead of doing their own, adopted the SDL one. So if it identifies your DualShock or your Xbox One controller or your cheap-ass Mad Cats controller, etc., it's a giant database of IDs for controllers for better controller supports. So also, we've got Vulkan support on the Mac OS via Molten VK. Now, I've done... Um, a video on Molten VK in the past. Basically, it's a translation layer for going from Vulkan to Metal, the native API on Apple products, because Apple is doing a real crap job at supporting uh, Vulkan and OpenGL in general. We also got better handling of high DPI and device scaling, uh, changing attributes of existing window, raw mouse input, um, explicit support for joystick hats and D-pads, user attention requests, so like the pop-up things, uh, transparent windows and frame buffers where possible, query for monitor work area, more runtime configuration, various other features, fixes, and a large number of bugs. Fixed, I assume, not added. So anyways, back to a bit of what GLFW is all about. I'm going to link to a link with all of these links in it, so don't worry too much about where we're at. Uh, but in this particular case, it is glfw.org. Uh, as you can see, it is open source. It is under the uh, Zlib, libpng license. And here you can see it kind of an overview of what exactly it provides. It gives you a window in OpenGL context with just two function calls. Support for OpenGL, GLES, Vulkan, and related options. Now, once again, those libraries, Vulkan and OpenGL, do not have any Windows-specific code in them. Uh, support for multiple Windows, multiple monitors, high DPI, and gamma ramps. Uh, supports for keyboard, mouse, gamepad, time, and window event input via polling or callbacks. Now, once again, uh, OpenGL and Vulkan do not provide input code either, so you're going to need a library to do that kind of stuff. Also comes with tutorials, documentation, etc. It is open source, OSI certified, allowing it to be used for commercial use. Access to native objects, compile time options for platform-specific features, and community-maintained bindings for a number of different languages. And they've also got this link here for alternatives. So if you're not down with using a GLFW, but you want to create a game engine or a framework using something like Vulkan or OpenGL, you are going to want to use one of these libraries. And we'll look at what those alternatives are in just a second. First off, let's look at their documentation link. And you can see an example of uh, what code is like working with uh, GLFW. And it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you're just creating a window. Did it knit work? If it didn't fail, uh, create the window. Uh, GLFW make context current with the window, and then now you can start calling OpenGL code right there. So it's clearing the screen, swapping the buffer, and pulling for events, and on and on and on. So there's your two OpenGL calls, and that is all you need to use to start working with uh, GLFW. It creates the windows for you, handles the input for you, and then you basically just start writing your OpenGL code or your Vulkan code inside. Now there is still, when you're dealing with Vulkan, there is a ton of setup you're still going to have to do, and way beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about in this video, but this at least is providing you those windowing and those input handling code that you need. So uh, it is also over on GitHub. It is available at GLFW. 
which was probably predictable enough. Uh, once again, the source code license was under libping, which is a very uh, friendly license. Now, one thing I really like about GLFW is it works for uh, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and other Unix-like operating systems. But one of the problems with working with a lot of these frameworks, especially in C, C++, when you're trying to get it up and running with Windows, is you have to go through a huge build process, and that's where they lose a lot of people. One thing that they do that is very, very nice, so you don't have to go through this stage right here. Instead, they have pre-confiled Windows binaries. Now, I wish more and more people would do this. It makes it so much easier to get up to speed and running if you are working in the Windows platform. Now, if you're on the uh, Linux platform or even a Mac platform, uh, building things from code is much more baked into the operating system, so it's not quite as much of a pain in the butt. But the nice thing is, oh, no, they only have source packages there either. Um, now, you may have up-to-date GLFW packages in things like uh, Mac ports, Arch Linux, and NuGet, um, but most do not, as they say there. So those are environments. Windows, uh, sorry, um, Mac and Linux are where it's got a compiler out of the box. It's got a build system out of the box, and building things from scratch is a very simple process. The deal on Windows, not so much. So I always love to see them providing binaries like they have right here. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, they also have a list of alternative libraries, and I've checked a few of these out in the past. Uh, now, there's one of the originals, the OG ones, is GLU or GLUT. Uh, don't touch GLUT. GLUT is horrible. GLUT, free GLUT is based on GLUT, but it's more up to date. GLFW is what we are looking at right now. And on top of that, we've got some multimedia libraries that provide a bunch more. You'll recognize these as basically 2D game frameworks, but they also create the window and do the polling and a lot of times have an interface to pass through to a uh, OpenGL or Vulkan context behind the scenes. And those are Allegro, which I've done a tutorial series on, SFML, which I've done a tutorial series on, SDL, which has been around forever and I haven't done a tutorial tutorial on. Um, and Akari, I don't actually know how to say that one. I've never actually worked for this one. I need to check it out. And then we've got some widget toolkits that also support creating the window and passing through that context back to uh, OpenGL. And those are things like FLTK, Qt, WX widgets, and Game GUI. Now, another important thing to point out about um, GLFW is it is not a window toolkit. There's no UI or anything like that. So if you're working in something like um, OpenGL and you want to provide a GUI, you're going to need to use a library to do that, or you use something like uh, TK or QT or WX widgets for providing that uh, functionality for you. So that is literally not what this library is about. This library is 100% about creating your windows, maintaining your windows, handling multiple resolutions and monitors and so on, and handling input, and that's it. Beyond that, the graphic rendering, all that is up to different things generally OpenGL or Vulkan, as we mentioned earlier. And that's it. Uh, that is the new version of GLFW. Um, it's actually kind of an area where people are getting less and less involved. So I'm, I'm not going to probably do any OpenGL or Vulkan related tutorials going forward. I think more and more people are moving to game engines, but I still think it's important to cover this lower level building block stuff, especially if you're out there and wondering, like, how do I build my own engine? Well, these are the building blocks that you've used. And if you are already using GLFW, well, for the first time in two plus years uh, there is a new version out there 3.3 check out for the link down below all right that's it for now i will talk to you all later goodbye